frankly, uh, I have been pushing NASA to uh, revamp its vision. Uh, the shuttle did some extraordinary work in uh, low orbit uh, experiments, the International Space Station, uh, moving cargo. It was, a, it was a, a, an extraordinary accomplishment, uh, and we're very proud of the work that it did. But now what we need is that next technological breakthrough. We're still using the same uh, models for space travel that we used with the Apollo program 30, 40 years ago. And so what we've said is, uh, rather than keep on doing the same thing, let's invest in basic research around new technologies that can get us places faster, allow human spaceflight to last longer, uh, and uh, you know, what, is, what you're seeing now is NASA, I think, redefining its mission, and we've set a goal uh, to let's ultimately get to Mars. Uh, a good pit stop is an asteroid. Uh, I haven't, I actually, we haven't identified the actual asteroid yet, in case people are wondering. Um, <laughs> Uh, but the point is, let's start stretching the boundaries so we're not doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, but rather, let's start thinking about what's the next horizon, what's the next frontier out there. And, uh, you know, but, but in order to do that, we're actually going to need some technological breakthroughs uh, that we don't have yet. And what we can do is, for some of this low orbit stuff, some of the uh, more routine uh, space travel. Obviously, no space travel is routine, but it could become more routine uh, over time. Uh, let's allow the private sector uh, to get in uh, so that they can, for example, send uh, these low Earth orbit uh, vehicles into space. And we may be able to uh, achieve a, a, a point in time where uh, those of you who are just dying to go into space, you know, you can buy a ticket. And uh, a private carrier can potentially take you up there while the government focuses on the big breakthroughs that uh, require much larger uh, investments and involve much greater risk. 